Hi everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs, and this is my Kenmore barbecue grill that I got 11 years ago. We use it all the time, and after several years, some of the internal components started burning out from the temperatures involved. For example, the burner tube, one of the burner tubes burned out, and one of the heat tents, and there's a heat shield. It was developing a big hole where it was getting burned through. It was starting to become unsafe to use. Now, I compensated by moving from the burned out burner to a burner that wasn't burned out, but still, clearly the grill needed some attention. And otherwise, it's in great shape. This stainless steel is in good shape. It's got dinged up a little bit from hail, but heck, everything else, there's no rust, no holes. It's really in good shape. So I decided I was going to go ahead and rebuild it by getting new products to, to replace the burned out products inside. Let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Now, it wasn't that hard to do, but there are some things that are a little complicated you need to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to close the valve on the gas tank, then disconnect the gas tank. Open the lid and remove all the grills and heat tents. In my grill, there was serious rust and corrosion, including one of the burner tubes, both flame tubes, and a big burned out chunk of heat shield. There was also a big mess on the floor of the grill, so I vacuumed it out. I used wire brushes to get even more gunk off and to clean up screw heads to improve the chance that they could be unscrewed. The heat shield is attached with only two screws and they are surprisingly easy to get at. I removed them and found that the heat shield was literally falling apart. The burners are all each attached with a single screw, and the first one was really stiff. However, all three came out with no problems. To remove a burner, Pull it up at the back while at the same time pulling it from the hole it fits into at the front of the grill. Don't pull too hard, just take it easy and the burner will come out. I pulled the center burner out just a little so that I could get to the igniter screws. I cleaned up the screws, then removed the igniter. Once the igniter was disconnected, I removed the center burner. Finally, the left burner came out. Then it was time to fabricate a new heat shield. I first tried bending it in this sawhorse tool, but it didn't work well. I then resorted to using a vise and hammer to bend the metal. I had to cut off a strip the full length of the piece. Fortunately, I happened to have an electric metal shear that made fast work of this cut. The metal needs to be notched where the heat tubes go. Mark the locations with a marker pen, then start cutting. I finished the rounded tops of the cutouts using a pneumatic cutoff tool, which made a lot of cool sparks but you could probably use good tin snips to get the job done. The fabricated heat shield came out looking pretty good. New burners that were an exact fit were cheap on Amazon. You can see that they are the same length and shape as an original burner, although the pattern of holes is a little different. I installed the burners, which was pretty much the opposite of removal. The valve end of the burner must fit over the short tube that extends from the valve, so look underneath the valve to be sure it's lined up. Then screw it in. Put in the remaining burners and screw them all in. The igniter attaches to the center burner 
and the screw holes all lined up perfectly. Put the igniter in place and screw it down. The crossover tubes, or flame tubes, were also amazingly cheap on Amazon. Their function is to let the outer burners get ignited from the center burner. These replacements fit perfectly, matching the mounting holes on the burners. However, getting the supplied screws to drive into the perfectly round holes was difficult. I ended up using a small screwdriver to kink the holes so that the screws would bite and drive in. The new heat shield was next. Again, it attaches easily with just two screws. The igniter had not worked for at least a couple of years. In looking at it, I discovered that it took a standard AA battery. I replaced the battery and the igniter sparked easily. So I hooked up the gas tank for the final test. We also replaced one of the heat tents, which was badly burned out. We got a generic replacement at Home Depot for $10, and it fit our grill fine. Now that wasn't too hard. The burners, in fact, are absolutely easy. So if you have a burned out burner, I would suggest you go ahead and get a replacement burner because they just don't cost very much and they're a snap to replace. The heat shield was the most complicated thing. And while it wasn't hard to do, it wasn't expensive to do, it was a little tricky to get it right. So I don't think that that is available as a replacement item and it was burned completely through. So I think it really needed to be replaced. So all in all, it was about $50 worth of parts. And of course the heat shield took some time and effort to fabricate the way I did. But the other stuff, it just dropped right in and was really easy to do. So if you happen to have one of these with a heat shield that's in good shape, or if you can figure out a way to replace the heat shield more easily than I did, then the other stuff is a snap. It literally takes just a few minutes. So I would recommend that you go ahead and do it. Hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs. Thanks for watching.